you can uh, you can actually stop me at any time you can uh, actually ask any question anytime you can raise your hand this is just like a simple presentation going through the main steps i will go through next 10 minutes or 15 minutes through the these steps and uh, see uh, how how it works so if i go Is it visible, my screen? Yes. 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 So we know that there are four randomized trials. There was randomized EVAR1, there was DREAM, there was OVAR, there are ASC trial. These were randomized control trials. They have shown the evidence that, um, uh, that uh, EVAR is better than open repair in terms of short of morbidity and mortality. This does decrease the early outcomes were quite good. And uh, but uh, hostile neck, poor access, and the ruptured uh, and uh, patient for ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm was not included in these cases. So going through these steps, so this can be uh, this can be done under conventional OR under a mobile C arm as we have the CM here, but uh, it gives a very good sterility because of the OR environment. EU standard for the standard EVAR, but the uh, only problem is that um, the imaging may not be of superb quality. And uh, this is the hybrid OR, which uh, gives the flexibility of sterile environment, excellent imaging quality, and uh, you have the inventory available. If there is a troubleshooting, you can always do it. So for the standard e ward, this will be the setup. Patient will be lying here. The operator will be here, and um, you, assistant will be just opposite. And we have this screen system, and these will be the shields which will protect them from radiation. But if we have a setup in a hybrid OR, the X-ray system will be coming from above. Assist uh, as a, the uh, anesthesia people will be sitting standing here and the main operator and the assistant, first assistant and second assistant will be there. So it gave a great amount of the workflow. The wires are long, they can be, there's an extra table, we place it at this point and that actually give a quite good uh, environment for working. So as we discussed, planning is the key because uh, if we plan better, so there's less chances of uh, failure of procedure so most of time, uh, uh, majority of the procedure is done before person enter into the procedure room. So the neck not me, eyelid bifurcations, and the and the excess vessels are very important in in uh, planning this procedure. So what are the basic steps? The steps are going to be the excess. Then we are going to place the uh, we are going to place the super stiff wires. Then we are going to get an angiogram after placing the main body. And for before placing the main body, we have to orient that main body. Then we have to cannulate the contralateral limb. And then we place the both eyelid ring and that check the uh, and do the check angiogram. So femoral access can be done as a open and percutaneous. We are more comfortable in doing the open one and we give a transverse incision. The only problem with open is that it is associated with more of wound complication and infection that and a special complication of lymphatic leak. So it is very important when it is going to be done open access, extra care should be done in sterility. And then the lymphatics should be properly tied. One technique is to go to the inguinal ligament, take all the tissues down and expose the common femoral artery and then place the uh, guide wire. Then uh, we have to decide beforehand which side we are going to place the main body. So floppy J wire is going to be placed in one of the excess vessel and that is going to take into the thoracic aorta. And over that guide wire, we are going to exchange it with super stiff guide wire, our catheter. So first we place a J wire, that is going to be checked that it is in the proximal thoracic aorta, then a catheter is placed and make sure that super stiff guide wire goes within this catheter. 
it is not going to be pushed beside it because it is going to cause damage and perforation of the vessel. And then make sure that the distal end of the super stiff wire is marked on a drape so that it remains stable during the procedure and does not move. As it moves, it can damage the inner wall of the uh, aorta and can cause uh, excess vessel damage or, or any embolism. Then uh, we place from the contralateral femoral excess a pigtail catheter, which is placed at the renal vessel, and it is usually at the L1 and L2 vertebral body. So from the right side, for example, if we are planning for the right side for the main body place, uh, main body placement, we place the uh, uh, super stiff guide wire, and that, and then on the other side we place the pigtail catheter. Then the main step is the delivery of the main body, but before that, we have to orient that main body. For every device, there is special precaution that how you have to device, how you have to mark it up. For example, in the Zenith crop, there is a, sp a special tick mark, which shows that this is the proximal end. And uh, if the tick mark is straightward, it shows that the contralateral side is pointing toward the other side. And that has to be done under fluoroscopy while the main body is out of the body. And then this main body is delivered over that stiff guide wire and placed, uh, in a, placed just at the level of the L1 and L2. And then we actually get the magnified view under the fluoroscopy. And, uh, and then it, uh, it is a angiogram is performed by using the power injector. We usually use 20 cc per second of injection for a total amount of the contrast 7 to 15. And that is usually sufficient to show the, uh, the level of the renal artery. So the first step, for example, as I have told, the first step is this one, super stiff guide wire placement. From the other way, we have to place the pigtail catheter. It is good to pick, place a pigtail catheter which has marks just like this. It is just like right is left and left is right. So this is the angiogram, which has been done with the power injector. It shows that the, this is super stiff guide wire. This is the pigtail catheter, which has been placed, and it shows the anatomy. And then the main body has been placed. So we see that the pigtail catheter is seen at the L1, L2 level. The left renal artery is usually lower one, which is shown here, and the right is this one and then the main body is here. But every, the, the target is to place this main body just below the lowest renal artery, within the 2 mm at the caudal end. And uh, for that, for example, for zeta crop, you have to start about one centimeter before, above, and then gently open it up. And then uh, when this has been done at this point, some of the people actually place, open it up, and when you have done just below the renal artery, and then you start opening it up, opening it up until the contralateral site is available. When the contralateral site is open, you can actually fix that, uh, uh, that point and take the, and go to the contralateral site. So usually this is done, contralateral cannulation is done to the, uh, from the opposite side, and uh, this is usually done by a steerable angle wire with angle guide wire and with a catheter. With, in 95% of the cases, it is usually possible. It takes some time and some techniques to do it. And the best technique is to use oblique fluoroscopic view to open the K, use both the catheter and wire to steer and attempt to place wire in the K. It is very important to confirm when the wire has been placed and you have never to place the eye extent without confirming it up. One way is to confirm when the wire has been placed is to do a check angiogram. Otherwise, rotate the pigtail catheter inside it and it will show like this. So this is the main body which has been opened. This is the contralateral gate. And this is the pigtail catheter which has been placed. This is a super stiff guide wire which has been placed. And then with a, this is the cannula, uh, this is the contralateral gate which is going to be cannulated. 
and through that the pigtail catheter is going to be placed and, and it is going to be rotated. If it is freely ro rotating, it means that you are inside the contralateral side. Now, before placing the contralateral side, you have to check the length from this side up to the iliac bifurcation. You need at least about two centimeter of landing zone here and about three centimeter of our left here. So you have to mirror from uh, considering this our lab up to here. For, for that, you have to see, uh, do a check angiogram, or uh, do an angiogram to see the location of internal iliac artery. And that can be done from the same side. So though this is an angiogram, which shows that internal iliac artery, this is the external iliac artery, and you can mirror from that. Every mark is showing about one centimeter. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to be 60 mm. For example, in a zenith crop, the overlap they have already taken about three centimeter. So they will say that this is about 60 m, uh, 60 mm uh, graph in length. So this is the limb length which you will be requiring at this moment. So you have confirmed, you have done an angiogram to check the internal iliac artery and then you place the graph. And before landing that, you can do uh, this angiogram has to be done for the right iliac in a left anterior oblique 20 degree and for the left iliac artery, right anterior oblique. And then the marking catheter is placed again over the wire and the is two centimeter in a patient with the non tortuous vessels and less than six centimeter of abdominal aortic aneurysm, as I have told you. So then the the iliac limb is placed and same is done on the other side. But before finishing it up, we usually choose a coda balloon, which is a compliant balloon, which is placed within the crawl. It actually removes all of the kings and make uh, the wall quite attached to them. And uh, just like this before, just like this, this is the angiogram, which has been done. Uh, this is the coda balloon, which has been placed. So never place a coda balloon at the junction site because it is going to cause the rupture. So these are the suprarenal bulbs which are placed in most of the stent crops and they are above the renal vessels. They give the anchorage to them. These are the stent scar. So that is done at the proximal and distal sites to prevent type one endole, then at the junctional site to prevent the type two endole. And then the final step, which is very simple, is to do a check angiogram to see for any endoleaks. The endoleaks can be of two types. They can be early, like means type one and type three, but there is a special type two, which needs a delayed images. Usually they come from the lumbar vessels, and IMA, and that has to be checked. So this will be the final configuration and that finishes. We usually close our protomy with a uh, linearly, or if there is a plaque, we can do endotectomy and place a pad and then check the restore the circulation. So these are simple steps for doing an EWAR. The, for the main step is the planning and selection of the patient, which you have already discussed. Thank you. If there's any question or query, you can answer. Thank you, Dr. Azir. It was nicely presented. And I think in the you have conveyed the message. If you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah. So that's the most important thing. Thank you. So, so uh, basically, uh, you have to uh, go through these steps. One of the idea is to go through a simulator to go through these steps and then do it up. And uh, other is to get a feel of those stand dwarfs which are there because it is nice to have idea of two stand dwarfs at least how they work. Although they in the FDA approved there are six stand dwarfs, but you have to know the in and out of at least two how when they are placed, what is their IFU, what are their steps, and this is nice to say. And then use some simulator work on that, and then you will be very uh, comfortable in do doing this procedure. Thank you. If there is uh, no comment, if there is no comments, we can stop. This is a good session. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for everyone.